Good evening and welcome to Eagle Field as the Liberty Benton Eagles hosting the Pandora Gilboa Rockets in a Blanchard Valley Conference matchup tonight. Liberty Benton looking to keep the winning streak going as they host the Rockets here this evening. Good evening everyone alongside Darn Evergall. I'm Patrick Kamler and they look into a, looking forward to a good old fashioned BBC showdown yeah, here absolutely. in the first week of October. Oh, I think so. And, and uh, these two teams, we can really look at them, are pretty much identical in the fact that they, they use the pass and they use the run very effectively. You know, they're not just a one-dimensional team. They can they have good quarterbacks on both sides of the ball. They also have excellent running backs. And, but I think defense is really going to be the key in this one here. You know, Pandora Bowl came off of a big win over Lipsick you know, a couple of weeks back. And, you know, they were able to hold Lipsick to 18 points. And their defense really came to, sh to play that day. And I think Liberty Benton, everybody knows what Liberty Benton can do on defense. They're only giving up 10 points a game. So, you know, we know what kind of defense they've got. So I expect a really good, hard-fought game tonight. Going to be an interesting test for both teams as uh, this is some of the stoutest competition that both teams have uh, faced this week or this uh, this whole season, particularly in conference play. And we are looking forward to a good one. We will step away, take a quick timeout, and be right back for the kickoff here on W. WOSN. Welcome back. Our first quarter sponsor is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cmbohio.com. Liberty Benton will receive to get things started here as we are ready for high school football action here on WOSN. And it's going to be a squib kick to start. And they'll just fall on it at the 41-yard line. And that is where Liberty Benton will set up shop. Grayson Wages fielding that one for the Eagles. Yeah, that's probably a smart move by Pandora Gilboa not to kick it deep to the to Liberty Benton's back guys because they've got a lot of speed back there. You're going to see a couple of things with this Liberty Benton offense. One is the fact that the Elker boys out there can really fly if they get the ball. They'll post them out there on the outside. But they also have good, strong running backs as well. Trying to lead the quarterback, and there's the handoff to Zach Elkert on first down and not finding much of any space to go there. He's going to lose two on the first carry. Yeah, you see Ben Burkhoger sprinting in there from his linebacker position. He timed that just right, crossed the line of scrimmage, and met the runner right there. So good stand early on by the Pandora Gilboa defense. And I'll bring up second down. Lead with over a thousand yards passing, only one of two BBC passers to be over a grand and completes that pass there on the far side. Seth Elkert picks that one up. Yeah, Seth Elkert, along with Zach Elkert out there. You know, what Liberty Men likes to do a lot, and they just throw it out in the flat like that, little short passes, and then let their wide receivers do the rest of the work. Like I said, these guys have some speed. They're not going to, they get a little opening, a little crease out there on the outside edge. They're going to be flying. The Elkerts, Zach and Seth, are two of the top scorers in the BBC. So they are guys that get their hands on the football quite often and score. Here is Lee just having to throw this one away on third down. And that will bring up fourth down. So good stop by the PG defense as it looks like they're going to force the Eagles off the field following their first possession. And that's key, too, because you know, one of the things that you literally really like to do is get off to a fast start. But this band, like I said, this Rocket defense is really coming on, to, uh, on its own. They give up about 22 points a game, but a lot of that was earlier on in the season. So this one will get off. Kind of a squibber. Takes some Liberty bit and bounces and will go out of bounds. The 23-24 yard line. So after a three and out, Pandora Gilboa's offense will come out as Corey Gurton will lead the rocket attack out. Yeah, 
Corey Justin Jr. started about midway in his freshman year for this Rocket offense and has improved every since. He's a 5'11", 165 pounds, you know, 63 out of 122 passing, just about 52%, 872 yards. But he's thrown six or nine interceptions, so that's a key too. Hand off going here on first down. Andrew Miller, as you mentioned, the six foot, 215 pound senior, is pushed out of bounds. Yeah, Andrew Miller is a beast. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, you look at him and he's solid all the way through. You know, he looks a lot stronger, a lot bigger than what it what this says on his stat sheet. But uh, he's kind of Mr. Inside for them. He he'll get a lot of his yardage, averaging just under six yards a carry. But a lot of that comes right up the middle, and he'll just push the pile if he has to. They'll throw in Burkholder on the outside. You'll see Burkholder take off around the corners a lot. They use his speed on the outside, but Miller's their big guy on the middle. Curtin under center. Here is second down. Miller again finding a seam and not shying away from contact there at the 35, and that will be enough for a Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. And that's going to be the real challenge for the Eagle defense is stopping him from getting that yardage in the middle like that. You know, the Rockets are going to run behind some big guys up front, too, with their... You know, Caleb Doty is their center leading it off up there. He's only a sophomore, but he's 200, 200 pounds. And he, they open a lot of big holes for Andrew Miller. Seth Elkert was in there on the stop for Liberty Benton. A little over two minutes gone by. Here is first down. Miller again out to the 39. Continuing to attack that middle area there. Austin Collard with the tackle. You see PG do this a lot, but they'll start out their, their offensive sets with a lot of runs, you know, trying to weaken up the middle, and then you'll see Corey Gurdon just drop back and pop one right now. And off here on second down. Miller bouncing it outside, has the sticks, and then some almost out to midfield. Might uh, be just a little shy of that, but gets the Northwest Ohio Recycling first down and a nice pickup of 13 on the carry. Yeah, he's got speed when he gets on the outside. He'll bounce around out there, but you know, like I said, he likes to run it up the middle, but you can let him give him a little opening on the outside. He does have the speed to get around the corner. You might almost say deceptively fast based Deceptive. on his build and how he runs. Certainly is, and that it catches a lot of teams off guard. In the gun, first down, oh, double nice handoff. Good. This one going out to the left side. Plenty of space there is Ben Burkholder. Burkholder is going to take this one. And no, he is stopped at the three yard line. Touchdown saving tackle there. So, reader one or the number 57? The number 57 who we don't have on the playbook or in the roster. So he's number one in someone's heart, yeah, but we he don't have him on the is. roster. But he just made a touchdown saving tackle there after the Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. That was a nifty little play there by the Rockets. A little, I haven't seen that one. And this is Miller handed on first and goal, and he will be stopped at the one. Well, they won't hesitate to do that same play over again, give it up to Miller. It's going to be Miller again, and it looks like, looks like he's in. And it'll be a touchdown. Eagle Insurance touchdown. So Pandora Gilboa gets on the board first. A nifty little you know, double handoff there that they got him down to that position to Burkholder. No doubt saw that on our Finley Truck and RV instant replay is Burkholder getting the chunk of the yards on that particular drive where they eventually hit pay dirt and that will put the extra point up and good. Just about four minutes gone by here in quarter number one. It's seven nothing Pandora Gilboa. We're back after this on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets! Rockets off to a great start here in this one, holding Liberty Benton to a three and out, and then 
taking the ball. I think that was a 79-yard drive, all on the ground, I believe. Yes, and it was. punching it in for seven points. And here's another squibber that will be once again fielded at the 40-41 yard line. So not allowing Liberty Benton to get off to any long returns, and it worked out for them on the first drive. We'll that's see what happens here on drive number two. Sorry, yeah, Doug, go ahead. No, that's all right. That's putting a lot of confidence in their defense right now, you know. And that's a Liberty Benton team that they're scoring almost 35 points a game. So if you think that you're going to hold them there all the time, you know, that's a lot of confidence you got. Lee back to pass, looking long here on first down. Snagged out of the sky, Seth Elkert using every bit of that 6-3 frame to bring that one in for Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. Seth Elkert, Elkert a junior, 6 foot 3, 185 pounds. And that's his 29th catch of the season and for over 450 yards now. He's got five touchdowns as well through in receiving. Way to move the sticks there for the Eagles as they are in plus territory. First down, ball at the 41. Now Lee Brook on the other side. Breaks a tackle there, does Connor Barbara. Barbara's going to take it all the way in for a Heigl insurance touchdown. And just like that, the Eagles strike. Well, Connor Barber is not one of the guys that they use a lot on wide receiver. You know, he can't he can't catch the ball. He's got 10 catches and he got 11 catches now. He had one, you know, fumble lost in those catches. But he, that's, I believe, his first touchdown. I believe you're right. They're using mostly as a, a cornerback and a kickoff returner. The kick is up and it is good. So Liberty Benton only needs two plays to strike from 59 yards out. And with 7.27 remaining in the first quarter, we're all tied up at seven. Buckle in. Here we go on WOSN. Our touchdown sponsor is Heigl Insurance in Finley. It has over 65 years of experience in the insurance industry, offering coverage for auto, home, business, life, commercial, and more. Liberty Benton going right down the field. Two plays, 59 yards to tie this one up at seven. And this ball will head out of the end zone, and PG will take over. The kicker for uh, Liberty Benz, Garrett Nealis. And Nealis is, you know, a senior. He also plays on the soccer team, too. He's one of their top soccer players for Liberty Benz. But that extra point he just kicked it makes him 30 out of 30 from point afters. And he's also got, like, that makes, like, 19 uh, touchbacks, I think, now that on kickoffs. You always uh, seem like you're looking for the soccer kid <laughs> to come out and kick footballs no for you. No doubt about it. Hand off and going nowhere is Miller on first down as the Liberty Benton defense is there. Well, that's a key for Liberty Benton. They've got some speed. They, they'll, they'll get down to the line quickly to get to the ball handler. But, you know, I was a little surprised in that first drive by Pandora, Pandora and Gilboa that they made it look so easy on the runs because this Liberty Benton team has really got a strong defense. The mystery of 57 has been solved for Liberty Benton. That's C.J. Barbara, who's 81 on our roster. Uh -oh. So yeah. here is Gurdon looking to pass on second and long. Pass is complete. A couple of yards there picked up by Lane Lee, number one. But not a lot. It'll make it third down and six coming up. So Lane Lee's one of their primary receivers, along with Chase Meyer, out there as well. You know, so those two guys, you can throw in uh, Nate Walker, too. Third down and six from the 24. Gurdon, flush out of the pocket, in trouble and going nowhere. Pretty much ran into William Granger, number 78. And that'll bring up fourth down. 
You know, that defensive line of C.J. Barber and Isaac Schroon, Austin Berger, and Will Granger's a load up front there for uh, Liberty Bet. So Austin Berger also getting credit for the stop there as, long, as well as Carl Chapman, I think, number 74. So fourth down, PG kicks this one back. Nice punt. A couple of guys missing there as Liberty Benton will bring it back into plus territory. Connor Barbara brings that out to the 46-yard line. So a bit of a short field for the Eagles as they begin drive number three. And there you see the Eagles defense stiffen up and force the three and out. And I, I look for a Liberty Benton to continue to do what they did in that first drive. I mean, they, they're coming up, throwing out of the shotgun. He's gotten a very successful in finding his receivers and a couple of them wide open. Lee pitches it on first down. Looking for some space there and not finding it as Zach Elkert is stopped for a one-yard gain on first down. Uh, Zach Elkert with 65 carries this season at 430 yards, averaging just under seven yards a carry with eight touchdowns. Not bad numbers. Top, he's the top rusher for Liberty Benton. This is a good down, really, to just test it deep now on uh, this Pandora defensive backs. And it looks like we are going to have a timeout taken. We'll take it as well. 442 remaining in the first quarter. All tied up at seven. You're watching high school football here on WOSN. Welcome back. 442 remaining in quarter number one. All tied up at seven. Liberty Benton with the football, facing a second down and 10. Lee lets it go. Far side. Pass is complete. Going to be close to a Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. Looks like they're going to give it to him. Absolutely. Reed Irwin with the catch. And that will keep the drive going for Liberty Benton. And you can see the respect the defensive backs have for Liberty Benton's wide receiver. She was playing him off probably a good six or seven yards when the receiver caught the ball and then had to come up to make the tackle on him. But you're going to have to play him a little closer than that. because, But you don't want them to be careful that they don't get around you. Ball to 37 here, first down, and there's going to be there's an early movement on the line, so that's going to back Liberty Benton up five yards. I'll tell you, Patrick, watch these linebackers because they're, they're making timing blitzes right there. You saw him come around the edge down there and just timed it to cross the line just, to, just as the snap was. It, it's underestimated the ability, the skill, the practice it takes to be an offensive lineman and not move mm -hmm. until the ball moves. And around. Oh, nice Looking for job. some space and not finding any anywhere. Pandora Gilboa there on the stop. Lane Lee getting in the backfield for a big loss. Wow. Looks like Lee was in the huddle on that one. He knew exactly yeah. what was going to happen. So Seth Elkert stopped for a significant loss, we'll say, and that will make it second and 18. We belong in the backfield with five wide. Drops back. Late blitz coming. Picked up. Lee lets this one go. Pass complete at the 35-yard line and going all the way down to the 26-yard line. Good for a Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. Braden Lemire coming up with the catch and the additional yardage. Well, once he made the first guy miss, he slipped out of that ankle tackle, and then he was able to get the first down. But 
play, you just see a flood of blue going down the field on that particular play. <laughs> First and 10. Ball now on the 26. Eagles in business. Leave throwing this one up. Pass is tipped away and incomplete. Was looking for Elkert there on the far side. It'll be second down. Yeah, we're throwing a little bit high, but you know, with these guys at 6'3 and stuff out there, you can throw it a little bit high. That one just out of his reach, bounced off and almost had a defensive back right in the right position to pick it off. Second and 10. Ball on the 26 yard line, under three minutes to go in the first quarter. Here's Lieb, going to toss this one up, looking for the end zone, has his man in, can't bring it in. Connor Barbara, the intended receiver, and couldn't hang on to it, and that is third down. Just about everything you wanted on that play up until the very end, Dark. And you can watch the quarterback jumping up and down. He thought for sure he had the guy open, he was there, you know, the throw was there, everything was going right, and then he just missed it. Finley Truck and RV with our instant replay. And those are, those are the things you work on in practice. Yep. You look at the film and we'll get that next time. Third and 10. Lead rolling out. Pressure coming. Let's this one go on the run. Incomplete. Elkert, the intended target again. And there was some contact there, but I don't see any flag. I think the timing was good on it. And that will bring up fourth down. Yeah, I think you're right, Patrick. I think the timing was just right. Hit him right in the numbers and just bounced away from him. I think it was Nolan Leatherman, the uh, junior cornerback back there to break that one up. So this is two for three on field goals. 42-yard field goal. Try for Nealis. This one is going to be short. Uh, maybe even a little bit to the left. And that kick is no good. So Pandora Gilboa's defense answers. And they are able to hold Liberty Benton scoreless. There's an injured eagle on the field as Braden Lemire needs tended to. We will step away for a quick second. 2.39 left in the first quarter. We are still tied at seven here on WOSN. Back to it, 239 left in quarter number one. All tied up at seven. PG takes over at their own 20. Hand off to Miller. Working that right side, picks up a couple. Now, Pandora sticking to the ground. I don't, I'm a little surprised they haven't really tried to open it up a little bit. Yeah, P PG's buttoned up the playbook quite a bit. I haven't really seen them no, it, do much and, more than run so far. Well, and uh, the double handoff has a nice little nifty play there, but that's about all they've done. And that was really more of a trick play than, yeah. than anything else. Here's a direct oh, snap, that. and uh, well, you know, you don't have to open it up if you can do that. And we're supposed to lie over cycling first down. The carry going out to the 37-yard, 36-yard line. Well, that's the key. If you're going to run the ball straight ahead, just keep your feet moving, and eventually somebody will drag you down. But a lot of them dropped off in the meantime. Right. I was a little shocked there that they don't. Uh, the tackling on that one because Liberty Bend is usually very solid when it comes to tackling. And they just and couldn't find his ankles. Back to the 36, trying to bounce this one out. And this time, nowhere to go. C.J. Barbara there on the stop for Liberty Benton for a loss of one. Yeah, there was Burke Holder on the carrier on that one. Uh, 
Coming up on the final minute of quarter number one, second down and 11. Receiver out to each side. Keeper, this is Burkholder looking for some space and backed up, nowhere to go. Barbara there in on the stop. This drive just going backwards thanks to Liberty Benton defense at his third down. And it's CJ Barber again on that one. Barber's got yeah, 16 tackles for losses. He has been disruptive in the middle, and well, I guess you'd say more disruptive in the backfield. Final seconds of quarter number one, third and long. Man in motion for the Rockets. Gurton dumps it oh. off, looking for Burkholder, and just over his hands, incomplete. And the Liberty Benton defense holds, and they will force a punt with 10.8 remaining. Yeah, that was a timing play right there between Burkholder and Gurton. Burkholder, you know, just didn't turn around at the right, right time. But, you know, boy, if he caught that ball, he had a lot of space in front of him. Yes, he did. Another one of those near miss plays yeah. that we uh, that we talk about, something very similar to what happened with Liberty Benton here on their last drive. Is this punt it is going to take a nice Pandora Gilboa bounce, and that's going to roll all the way down to the 13 to the 12 yard line as that wraps this first quarter of action here from Eagle Field, and it's a good one here at the BBC, all tied up at seven between Liberty Benton and Pandora Gilboa. We're back for quarter number two when we come back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Second quarter, ready to get started. Our sponsor is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cmbohio.com. Uh, we're going to start quarter number two with a penalty, I think I heard. Was there a legal chop block called? Uh, it's like pick up a flag, so I'm not sure what he's going to call. And then the process of moving to the other side of the field. The ball was initially down around the 12-yard line following the Pandora Gilboa punt. I think the officials going into Finley. And it's down at the 19. And he's going to kick again. So they're going to do this at the same space of the field and a much better return set up and field position going to be set up for Liberty Benton as Elkert takes it out to the 36 and that's going to be way better starting field position for Liberty Benton. Now since that was at the end of the last quarter they're going to reverse it and go to the other side. I think I, Yeah, I think they are. I mean that's they're getting a workout, aren't they? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so they're going to walk that out, and Liberty Benton fans might be a little surprised that they had seven points scored on them so very quickly. I think I think they are, but you know, like I said, you know, this you, you got to watch this Pandora Gilbo team when they when they're running the ball because you know Andrew Miller and Burton Holder are very good runners. You saw what Gerton can do when he does want to carry the ball. He can't run, but I think they just came out and they you know they had a little bit of momentum when they stopped Liberty Benton on their first drive, three and out. I figure why not? We'll throw in that little trick play, you know, and, and see what happens with it. It paid off. So Liberty Benton doing most of their damage through the air. Pandora Gilboa uh, using some trick plays and doing it on the ground. Now let's kind of see what their uh, defense is made of really right here because Liberty Benton's got good field position. Eagles fairly deep in plus territory as they start their next drive. 
And Lieb hands it off to Elkert. Has some space there across the 25. Breaking some tackles and is going to take this one in for six. Zach Elkert with a high goal insurance agency touchdown. And right there, boy. He just went right through the middle there and got bounced off. And you're, if you want to pull him down, don't hit him up high like that because you're not going to knock him over. You're going to have to go low on him and take his feet out from under him. Zach Elkert, the 6'3", 195-pound junior. Puts that one in from 36 yards out. And just like that, it is 14 to seven. Liberty Benton has taken the lead, retaken the lead on Pandora Gilboa. We're back after this on WOSN. Welcome back. Our first down sponsor is Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. Eagles up 14 to 7. And Eagles with the kick down to the two-yard line. Eagles returning it and uh, just just stopping right there at the 20-yard line. Just got disappeared. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> like he hit a wall. Yeah. <laughs> Rockles will take over. Only 15 seconds gone by in quarter number two. Feels like it should be more than that, but only 15 seconds have passed. We heard, we heard the uh, PA announcer, you know, that touchdown by Elkert was you know, in 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So, but... Uh, PG just needs to have a long, sustained drive here. They need to keep this offense for Liberty Benton off the field and away from it. You know, and they need to get down and put some points on the board, but at least keep the ball in, in control. Play action. Gurdon in trouble. Just going to throw this one away. Intended for a brick holder. I guess it was in there on him. C.J. Barber again. You can change the number, but you can't change the guy. He will uh, he will be found out, regardless of what jersey number he's wearing, even if it says 81 on our uh, on our sheet here. Ball to 20, second down and 10. Three receivers. Flag comes out as this play is blown dead. And this is probably going to back up the Rockets five yards. Nope. And it's going to be encroachment, or offsides rather, against Liberty Benton. So that'll give the Rockets five yards. Both these teams still have been pretty good as far as penalties go in the season. That would have been right now the 20th penalty for Liberty Benton so far. And just if you flip it over to Pandora Gabo, they get 23. And I just reversed it. So a penalty against Pandora Gilboa. Offsides on the offense. That's a that's a new experience. It's not a false start or anything. Okay. I mean, not a false start or legal formation or offside. Okay. Must have lined up offside. Second down at fifteen. Trying to get some of that yard back, and Andrew Miller doing exactly that. Gets it all back, and then some Northwest Ohio recycling first down for the Rockets. Tackled the 34-yard line. Yeah, brought down by Connor Barber. But uh, you saw uh, Andrew Miller and his strength. He ran right into Connor Barber and right over the top of him. And Connor Barber's not a small guy. He's a six-foot, 155 pounds. But... Andrew Miller gets a full head of steam going like that. Yeah, I wouldn't want us to be standing in front of him. Ball to the 34 now, following the big gain. Puts this one up. Chase Meyer with the catch, the 5 6 junior. Picks up nine on first down. Yeah, Meyer's averaging almost 15 yards a catch, so. Yeah, he's a guy they like to go to. 341 yards, 23 catches coming into this game and four touchdowns. Him and Lane Lee 
couple guys I like to throw out there too. Meyer fourth in the BVC and receiving. Playbook open. Fakes the pitch. Gurdon going long, and the pass is incomplete. There was plenty of traffic down there. Plenty of arm by Gurdon as well, but that's a tough one because it was up in the air for so long. They gave the defensive backs time to close in on the receiver. Indeed it did, and there wasn't a lot of space in there to begin with. Those, deep, those, def or those receivers were pretty well covered. That's one of those passes you throw up there and you hope it gets to your receiver, not right. them. Here is Burkholder is trying to push his way forward, but nothing doing, and that will bring up fourth down. Boy, this is decision time for the Rockets. I was just going to say, are we uh, you want to thinking about away? fourth down? Well, they're lining up. Yep. Maybe going to try and draw them off sides. That would be my guess. They will try it. Fourth down. Miller has it. And then some. Out to the 49 for the Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. Andrew Miller running right around Parker Gillespie on that right-hand side. You got Gillespie over there and a couple other uh, big guys on that side of the ball for uh, Pandor Gilboa. Give it to Andrew Miller, get your yard. Out to the 49. This is Miller again. Working outside, lowers the shoulder, hard running out to the 41 yard line. And they're going to give him the Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. Bentley Truck and RB instant replay there. You see him just lower the shoulder. Nothing wrong delivering some punishment if you're a ball carrier. You get, you get hit so many times. He's going to, he's the guy that's going to give you some punishment, that's for mm -hmm. sure. In plus territory. Pitch going out. This is Meyer. Cutting it back inside and only a modest gain on first down. One, maybe two yards. At that time, you saw Parker Gillespie, the big right tackle, switch over to the other side, and that play went to that side on him. He's a, he's a big kid, six foot, 240 pound senior. Methodical drive for the Rockets, 8.08 remaining here in the second quarter. This is Miller once again. Just about every Eagle in there on the stop on that one. Give him about a yard, and that'll bring up third down and long. So you're in the defensive huddle, and you tell everybody, okay, I'm not doing this by myself, guys. Let's care of about five other guys, right. and we'll stop this kid. Can we modify Red Rover, <laughs> yeah, really? only get a running start? Tomahawk chant coming from the Liberty Benton student section. Gurdon, pump fake, throws, third and long, looking for him, has a man, and puts it in for the touchdown. Chase Meyer with his fourth touchdown of the fifth touchdown of the season, and they are an extra point away from tying this one back up. And that was not an easy throw by Gurdon either, because he pump faked it one time, was going to his left, and had to really throw across his body the other way, and put it right on the money. A great looking pitch and catch there. The Finley Truck and RV instant replay bringing it to you. Another big play. Indeed. <laughs> Through the air and an extra point is good. 7.23. We are just over halfway in the second quarter. And we're all tied up at 14. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Pandora Gilboa just tying it up. 14-14. 
Most points Liberty Benton has allowed since week number two, I believe. Maybe week number one. That ball out to the 46, brought out there by Austin Collert. Yeah, the first time they actually ran the ball back on one of those little pooch kid kind of type things. So, yeah, the last few they've just they're fallen just on fallen it. On. Yeah, this one here, you got it to call it. He says, "I'm going to run it." And the strategy is interesting because every time you do that, you're essentially giving Liberty Benton a short field instead of making them go 80, 70 yards to try and score. Well, again, that's that respect you've got for the guys that are back here on the kickoff returns. So lead hands off to Elkert on first down, making some guys miss. How about hitting the B button there for Elkert out to the 40-yard line in a Northwest Ohio recycling first down. Or circle, if you're so inclined. Yeah, so inclined. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and that's what I was saying. On the kickoff returns, they avoid kicking it back to Elkert for that reason. He's got the speed and the agility to get a long yardage on it. So they've been short kicking it. The, right there, he's just like spinning his way through. Ball at the 40, first and 10. Lee back to pass, looking long, and is going to overthrow him. Pass is incomplete. It's intended. Yeah, that was intended for Barbara. Defensed by uh, Nolan Leatherman, number 11. And neither one of them could get to that ball, even yeah. though they got tangled up between the two of them down there, but it was uncatchable. So a good no call there. It makes it second down and 10. I can see Lee doing it again, just trying the same thing. Lee rolling out, complete, reaching up for that one, bringing that one in, Seth Elkert. And it took a, a few rockets to bring him down, down at the 34-yard line. So that'll make a third down and about four coming up for LB. That's a good quarterback and receiver combo right there because he just throws it out there and lets Elker just reach up out of the sky and pull it down. On the 34, third and four, Elkert receives the handoff, pushes it outside, spins again, has the first down, dropped to the 26-yard line. Good for another Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. Now that play right there, you saw the LB take advantage of that blitz by Pandora Gilbo because you saw the guys blitzing in there on him, and they came in so fast that by the time they were able to re recover, it was too late. Elkert was already through the line and gained some big yardage, using his speed to get right past them. So the blitz will work sometimes, but sometimes you can get burn on it too. For sure, and so far it has worked really well for Liberty Benton. Back to action here at the 25, first and 10. Lieb looking long again. Corner end zone has his man once again, and this time, Connor Barbara brings it in for the touchdown. Nice route there by Connor Barbara. Just went fake going to his right, recovered, went back to his left, and the ball was right on the money. A high goal insurance touchdown, and Liberty Benton back on top, 20 to 14. I really didn't expect to see the fireworks like this we were seeing tonight. No, did not expect this either. The extra point is up and good. The Eagles back on top, 520 left in the first half. It's a 21-14 lead for Liberty Benton here on WOSN. Welcome back, Liberty Benton up 21 to 14 over Pandora Gilboa, just striking and uh, Dar, something you mentioned, the big plays. This has been kind of a head scratching night for the defensive coordinators that both these teams have hit on home runs. Every one of the touchdowns have been on a home run ball of some kind. And, you know, very few plays from scrimmage, you know, a few runs in there, but most of them have been just throwing it deep down the field. 
Ball be fielded at the five yard line and dropped to the 20 yard line. And that is where the Rockets will start their next drive. We talked about how stout defensively Liberty Benton has been, and they only allowed 12 points over the last four weeks. In fact, the only time they've allowed more than six points to be scored in a game was their loss to Columbus Grove back on the 30th of August, a game they lost 42 to 14. Well, this, since 1972, this is the 50, 51st meeting between these two teams with Liberty Benton holding a 32 to 18 edge. PG looking to fix that here tonight. Andrew Miller across the 25 to the 26. It's been mostly, if you used a broad brush to paint it, it's been Liberty Benton over the air, and it's been Pandora Gilbo on the ground for the most part that has led to the scoring in this one so far. Yeah, a lot of feeding the ball to Andrew Miller. Miller just kind of sets up their offense, gets them in position. Then you got to sit and think about him all the time, know where he's at, and that's when Gurdon's been able to go over the top. Gurdon hands off. This is Burkholder, and he is gobbled up in the backfield. Takes a loss there. Gets some credit, however, for forward progress. Still going to be third down and long coming up for the Rockets. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good bet. Probably CJ Barber down there making the tackle. The PA guy agrees with us. Yep, there you go. Timeout on the field with 422 remaining and uh, only into uh, just a little over halfway through the high school football season. And many people look at this game tonight as the de facto BVC championship. Both these teams unbeaten in conference. And at minimum, you would say the team who wins tonight is definitely going to have the inside track into wrapping up the BVC this oh, year. Absolutely. And I don't have the schedule for the rest of them for the rest of the way on tonight. But I would say that that's a sure bet. And, you know, Liberty Benton's already played in Macomb. You know, so usually you think of McComb being in the mix as well. This is kind of an off season for them. But Pandora Gilboa has really started to put things together. And if they can win this game tonight, that's going to be a huge boost for that Rocket team. And depending on what the, what's left in their schedule, you know, and how far they can go then. Liberty Benton, if they come away with a win here tonight, they would be still unbeaten, obviously, in the BBC with Lipsick, which would be a competitive game, no doubt. Arcadia and Van Buren. Arcadia still looking for their first win of the season. And Van Buren, they're at 500. So uh, the Eagles would have a lot of very winnable games coming up for Pandora Gilboa if they take care of business. Arcadia, Ada, surprising 5-1 and one this yeah. year. Although, yep. yep, and uh, Riverdale. Yeah, it could be a, a challenging one for you. Now, the Rockets started out the season, of course, with Columbus Grove, and then they had Bluffton after that. And right away, you looked at their, their averages, their offensive and defensive averages, and you think, oh, my gosh, you know, these guys. But anytime you're going to start out with Columbus Grove and Bluffton, you know, it, it's going to be a, a long season for you. Uh, yeah, without a doubt. Back to action here, Gurdon. Dumping it off to Miller on third down, and I think he got enough on third and 10 on the screenplay for a Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. Again, Liberty Benton and the guys trying to tackle him up around the shoulders as he's going down that sideline. It's not going to work, guys. I can tell you that right now. Either knock him out of bounds before he gets to that first down marker, or you're going to just give him the first down. So good pass play, moves the sticks for the Rockets. And the handoff, this is Miller once again to the 36. Picks up a couple there on second, or on first down rather. Second down coming up. And the other thing you gotta like about Miller is he, he doesn't try to get fancy. You know, he, does, you know, he, I've, we've seen him boot around to the outside a couple of times, but pretty much he just keeps his feet churning, keeps moving forward, and, and you know, you have to take him down from there. But he doesn't get fancy. He just gets his yardage. 
Ball on the 36, second and eight. Here is Miller once again, workhorse tonight so far for this offense. Picks up an additional couple of yards. They're down in five coming up. As we talked about, Patrick, you know this this is a, the logic behind the Rocket offense or Rocket coaching staff is. We're going to churn it out. We'll keep running the ball up. We'll get our first downs. We'll keep the possession of the ball. Keep that Liberty Benton offense off the field. Play action on third down. Looking for that far side. And Liberty Benton is there. A host of Eagles in on the stop. And that'll bring up fourth down. And you, and you have to wonder if you're going to Go for it on fourth down. Well, they're not going to make us wonder very long. Once again, hurrying up to the line. Probably an attempt to draw off sides here. It's 17 seconds on the play clock. Moving around some personnel. Uh, it will be a pooch punt. Well, Gurdon is your punter, so. So this will take a nice PG roll. And between the 15 and the 16 yard line. So, an opportunity for the Liberty Benton Eagles to extend their lead here, possibly before halftime. And 2.15 remaining in this half. That's plenty of time to get down the field, especially the way they like to move the ball. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> Big play offense tonight for the Liberty Benton Eagles, and their shortest scoring drive of the night was 10 seconds. Ball at the 15, first down, handoff. Elker oh, trying to reverse job. field and nowhere to go. Drop behind the line, loss of three on the play, two on the play, second down. Coming up under two minutes to go here in the first half. Seven point lead on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard for Liberty Benton. Leave in the gun, rolling out to the right, second and long. And Leave is just going to toss this one out of bounds. Nowhere to go with it. It'll be third down. Uh, good coverage by the Rockets on, on that one. They had at least three guys over there on the receiver, so all he could do is throw it over his head and out of bounds. So third down and 12. Minute 39, Eagles with one timeout remaining. Even though the clock's not really a factor for them on this particular drive, uh, less so if they don't convert here on third down. And they'll hand it off. Oh, Elkert break. coming, working near side, pushed out of bounds. Around the 28-yard line, and that will get the Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. And yeah, the Rockets had him dead to rights back in the backfield. They could have dropped him for a two-yard loss. He was able to wiggle out of that one and actually pick up the first down. But, boy, there was an opportunity for Pandora Gilgo to stop this drive right there. And you got to think, too, what a luxury. Hey, let's hand it off on third down and 12, and we feel reasonably certain that we can get a first down. The speed of those guys, you know, both Seth and Zach Elkert, you know, is just phenomenal. And I mean, and and they do such a great job. I mean, you're seeing Zach, you know, Seth Elkert out there catching the ball, and Zach Elkert running the ball. And Lead looking over the middle, and pass is incomplete. Looking for Braden Lemire there, and. I'll tell you what, Patrick, I, I saw Pandora Gilbo did a Pandora and Lipstick game, and Lane Lee is probably one of the better defensive backs I've seen in the area. I mean, he's not a big kid. You know, he's just five foot nine, but he seems to know, have an instinct to know exactly when to knock the ball away. So he's done a terrific job tonight, offense and defense, but he's, we've called his name a few times defensively. Yeah, he gave the Vikings a fits all night long. Second and ten, man in motion. 
And then motion is who gets the football out across the 35 and pushed out of bounds around the 37 yard line. Seth Elkert is going to be about a yard short of the first down and stops the clock with 114 remaining. And that's just something they work on in practice a lot. It's just leading that receiver. And if you can lead these guys with that kind of speed and put it on them when they got a full head of steam going, you know, they're going to gain them five, six, seven, eight yards from me in a heartbeat. Third and short. One yard to go and timeout. Pandora Gilboa. Head coach Matt Hershey takes his first time out. We'll take it as well. 114 left in the first half. Seven point lead for the Eagles here on WOSN. Third and one for the Eagles. And handoff, Elkert. Gets it. Northwest Ohio Recycling first down out to the 45-yard line. And he has been consistently able to find space in that middle of the defensive front for PG tonight. And he's drawn behind some big guys in there. In Vermillion, it's 505. Granger, 250 or 205. And Granger, 265 right up the pipe. We look along for Elkert and brings it in at the 24-yard line. Uh, Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. The clock will stop while the chains move as the Eagles get set. They'll spike the ball to stop the clock. That'll bring up second down, and once again, you see Liberty Benton able to connect on the big plays to uh, move the ball quickly down the field. And, you know, obviously at the college and at the pro level, you see offenses run like this, two-minute drills, things like that. You don't see it run super often at the high school level, but I'll tell you what, Liberty Benton's looking pretty good running it so yeah, far. They certainly are. Wade, second and ten, oh. ball batted out of the sky. Defense applied there. Caden. That'd be 85. Alex Rutzler, Schilling, Schilling. Okay. It's interesting, you saw Zach Elkert play just before that one, come off the field and call it went in for him, but you can see Elkert just kind of bent it over, touching his knees. Must take a little bit of wind out of him. Legal substitution on the Eagle, so a third and 10 will become a third and 15. Why do I have a feeling it's not going to change their game call or the play right. call? Yeah, I don't, I don't think those five extra yards are going to affect what they call it out there. I think it'll be the same no matter what. Play clock down to five. They don't get this off. It's going to be five more yards. Down to one, they get it off. Lead back to pass, looking across the middle, has his man. 20 to the 18 yard line. Northwest Ohio recycling first down. Connor Barbara brings that one in. And he goes hurrying up to the line of scrimmage. He spikes it again. Clock stops with 37.9 remaining. The Eagles are keeping this one going. One timeout left and 37.9 seconds, and they have been able to find the holes in the seams in this rocket defense here. Well, really throughout the first half, but especially on this drive. Yeah, those crossing patterns have really been hurting on Pandora Gilboa. What's coming? Your second down. Lee gets this one out. Pass complete out to the nine-yard line. Austin Collard making the catch. Clock will continue to move. 27 seconds. 
Third down and one, and the Eagles will call their final timeout. So Liberty Benton has the football. Third down and one coming up with the ball to the nine-yard line. And it's one of those scenarios where you can just get the first down, you get the advantage of the clock stopping while the sticks reset, and you've got some opportunities there. And, hey, you know, Lee's been pretty proficient at spiking the ball and commanding the clock, which you think, well, of course, why wouldn't you be? Well, again, as we mentioned, this is not something you see very often at this level. So you you commend kids when they execute it very well, and that's what the Eagles have done on this last drive. Yeah, and they're bound to turn, you know, the quarterback doesn't want to make any mistakes. He doesn't want to call the wrong thing. So he's definitely going to spike the ball, get an opportunity to talk to his coaching staff. This time here, they called a timeout, gave him another opportunity to come over there, decide what, how do you want to handle third and one. And I agree, Patrick. You can get the first down, let him move the chains, and then you got an opportunity to go for it. I got the strange feeling, though, that they're not going to wait to try to get the first down. I think you're right, Dar. I don't. And if you're Liberty or if you're uh, Pandora Gilboa, very hard to just pin your ears back and come after the runner because they've been so successful over the air. As here they go, and this is going to be incomplete. That one just slipped out. Of the end, I, I think, think so. Elkert was the closest one to the ball, and he was open. If he caught that ball, yeah, he had he, he would have definitely got the first down if nothing else. So fourth and one, and you. Looks like they are going to go for it. 20 seconds remaining, and Pandora Gilboa is going to talk this one over. 20.6 seconds left. It's a seven-point lead for Liberty Benton. Can they add on? Find out next on WOSN. Twenty point six seconds remaining. Fourth and one for Liberty Benton. Ball at the Pandora Gilboa nine yard line. And direct snap. We're going to take this one in. Elkert with the Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. And it looked like he had plenty of it. Oh, we got a like the old. It was a fumble, and he picked it up, uh, or intentionally set it on the ground for him to pick up. So there's a couple of different ways to describe it, but it's going to be a penalty against Liberty Benton. So they're going to have to redo this one. It'll go from fourth and one to fourth and six. And for as well as you've moved the football for the Eagles, you have to wonder if... That changes the calculus at all if you're and still going to try and go for it. I think so you got a kid to sit in there that can kick field goals, and this is this would be a extra point shot for him from this spot. For sure, at least pretty close to it. Got some cramping down there on the field right now, as a PG player is attended to. It's number 74, Anthony Gershitz. 5'885 pound senior. Oh, I see Garrett Neal is going out there. Yep. He's going to put it down, try the field goal. He's two for four so far this season. 6'1, 185 pound senior, and they will attempt what looks to be a 20, I'm sorry, a 32 yard field goal. I came up short on his first attempt tonight, 42 yards. Well, 10 yards closer, and we'll see where they go. This one is up, and it is through. 32-yard field goal is up and good. Liberty Benton extending their lead 24-14 to here on WOSN. Eleven point six seconds left in the first half. It's a twenty-four to fourteen Liberty Benton lead. And if you're a Pandora Gilboa, you have to feel pretty good about holding them to three points on that last drive. Yeah, I think so. You know, they kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit with a couple of things they did on that drive. But yeah, if you're a Rocket, you got to be happy with the outcome. 
Milos hits a 32-yard field goal and will kick this one out of the back of the end zone. His 20th touchback of the season. So with 11.6 left in the first half, be interesting to see if Matt Hershey just kneels on it or runs a play and calls it a half. Uh, I can see him handing it off to Andrew Miller to see if Miller can get anything going, you know, teed up some five or six seconds off of it. Right. Well, they'll just knee. deal it down. Go back in and talk about it. So that'll wrap up half number one here from Eagle Field. It's a 24 to 14 Liberty Benton lead here on WOSN. So welcome back, 24 to 14, Liberty Benton on the top of Pandora Gilboa. The third quarter ready to get started in our third quarter is sponsored by Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. 31 seconds left in halftime and as we get ready for half number two to get started and uh, Pandora Gilboa will get the ball first, darn every goal. And you get the sense that this is kind of a big drive coming up for Pandora Gilboa as it seems that like Liberty Benton might be poised to pull away with this one. Even though it's been a close game and competitive, Liberty Benton has done a great job with big plays in scoring on in this game. Oh, certainly have it. And if I'm not mistaken, Liberty Benton has not given up any points in the third quarter, and, and the second half has always been their big half as well. So, you know, if, if Pandora Gambo can go down and score, that's going to be a big lift for this team because, like I said, nobody else has been able to do it on Liberty Benton in the third. You know, so why not Pandora Gambo in this case? But there's got to come up with a way to stop these big plays, and particularly that those crossing patterns that you know Liberty Benton's been able to run to get the ball to the Elkhart boys and let them do their thing, and CJ. Barber is just having a great game so far for uh, Liberty Bent. Third quarter is underway. Nealis puts a charge into this one, and it will be yet another touchback. Just 21 of them so far this season for that young man. <laughs> He's just collecting them at this point. He's also punted the ball twice so far this season, and that one for 64 yards, those two punts. So 32-point average on kicking, kicking punts as well. So his average on kickoffs, by the way, is like 54 yards. So 21 touchbacks is nothing. <laughs> Rockets start at the 20. Here's Andrew Miller. And this time, he is stopped behind the line. A host of Liberty Benton Eagles there on the stop on that one. As that was Maddox Vermillion getting in there on the stop. Second down. Yeah, Maddox Vermillion got in there really quickly. And I think... You know, Liberty Benton is going to key on Andrew Miller even more here in the second half because he carried the ball most of it in the first half for Pandora Gilboa. Not a ton of deep pass plays for Gurton. They're going to pass it here on first down, and Lee completes it. I believe he came down with it, but doesn't get a whole lot, just a couple of yards, and it's third down and long. He was trying to duck under that defensive back that was coming in on him really fast. And didn't quite duck down far enough, but he didn't manage to hang on to the ball. So third down and 10 coming up for the Rockets. The Eagles are trying to get off the field here on a three and out. <clears throat> Four wide for PG. Gurdon rolling to his left. In trouble, avoiding the rush. Trying to get some here, and he will. Pushed out of bounds at what may be a Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. It looks like he does have it. So able to scramble for 11 yards and pick up the first. So it's kind of a foot race once he came back around to the other side and uh, number 76 was trying to chase him down, but Curtin had the speed to get around that corner and get that first down. Big play for Pandora Gilboa to keep this drive going. Out to the 32 now. First and 10 for the Rockets. 
Takes the handoff, Gurdon looking left side, pass complete at the 38 yard line. About six yards on that play. So Nathan Walker making the catch on that play and getting credit for forward progress, second down and five. I think that's Nate Walker's first catch of the night. I think you're right. He averaged about 11 yards a catch, so he got like maybe six on that one there. <laughs> Second and four. Hand off up the middle and nothing available there on that play. Third down. They ran a big number 78 there for Van Or for a little bit. That's Will Granger. There and about four of his best friends. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> tough to run, Mary, because you got C.J. Barber on that side and along with Will Granger. Line well, play's been really good for Liberty Bend. The uh, running yards that PG has gotten have usually come from trick plays. Gurton's going to throw this one up on third down, looking for Chase Meyer and a fight for the football, and it comes up incomplete. Carson Griffin in there on the defense, and it is fourth down. Yeah, Carson Griffin was stride for stride with the receiver. He's a sophomore, 5'10", 166 pounds, or 165 pounds, but he has one interception this year already. It's out there in the Finley Truck and RV instant replay, and now looks like it's going to be another pooch punt. It is, but we'll see what happens here. We're going to have... Are we going to have offsides on Liberty Benton? Oh, yeah. So offsides on Liberty Benton. So that will give PG a first down. Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. Just break for the Rockets there. Now you got to take advantage of it. New life breathed into this drive for PG. Now they'll get the ball at the 43. Here first and 10. Green play out. It's going to be a pass. Lane Lee with the completion to Walker. His second catch of the night. Now get out to the 49-yard line where the play is blown dead, essentially. So trying some trick plays there. Matt Hershey going to the back of the playbook. Yeah, that was a dangerous one, though, because there was a lot of blue shirts around Nate Walker. And Lane Lee just kind of lofted it up there a little bit, and, but it came down to Walker's hands. But, boy, there was a lot of blue there. Right there. And kind of a short pass. You know, when you do something like that, it's usually because you're looking for something a little longer. Yeah. Five yards on that play, second down. And this is Burkholder out across midfield to the 49 and no further. Third and two coming up. Yeah, that's twice now they've tried that play with a direct snap back to Burkholder, and neither one of them's worked very effectively. Yeah. Eagles trying for another stop on third down. And we'll have a timeout. Pandora Gilboa calling timeout. 7.09 remaining here in quarter number three. And of course, did you know you can stream the WOSN channel anytime, anywhere for only eight bucks a month. Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn. Dot TV. Do you own a Roku or an Apple TV, Dar? Yes, I do. Both or just, just one? Just Roku. Just the Roku? Yep. Very nice. You can watch all kinds of WOSN programming, WTLW, right there on your Roku device. I just have to break my wife away from murder mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> 
for uh, my wife. It's design shows. Yeah, really? She's yeah. Uh, oh no, really in design shows and remodeling old hotels. Oh, good. There's this one show that I don't remember the name of it. Remodeling old hotels, and at the end of the day, I'm looking at it going. All they did was paint the walls and charge three hundred dollars a night. There I don't. I don't understand it. The play is blown dead here on third down. It'll be a false start against Pandora Gilboa. So a third and two turns into third and seven. Not exactly what you wanted to see if you're a Rocket fan. No, and it, like I said, neither one of these teams really have a lot of penalties this season, but. You know, this one here comes at a very bad time for the Rockets because they were able to really get the ball moving. You can look for them now. Now they're facing a third and seven where Liberty Benton says, well, we know what you probably want to do. Question is, are you going to do it or are you going to hand it off to Miller? Right. Third down and seven, and this another flag comes out. Oh, Pass is hit. caught at the 47-yard line, but I don't think this is going to stand. It'll be a Northwest Ohio Recycling first down pending the penalty, although I think it is going to go back. Okay, he's pushing. He's pouring towards Pandora Gilbo side. Yeah, so. illegal shift on the Rockets as uh, their wide receiver, whoever was lined up on the near side, got a little bit of a head start. So third and two has turned into third down and 12. This drive going in the wrong direction right now for the Rockets. This third down's going in the wrong direction. <laughs> Three wide on the left. One receiver right. That's Burke Holder moving in motion. Ball to 41, third and 12. Screen pass oh. set up by Miller and going nowhere. Liberty Benton sniffs that out for another loss. And it's going to be fourth down and a cruise ship coming up for Liberty for uh, Pindor Gilboa. I thought that may have been Reed Irwin that got in there first. Show you there on the Finley Truck and RV instant replay. And Liberty Benton not fooled in the least. And no doubt, Gurdon punting this one away. Bounces a little bit back to the direction of Liberty Benton, down at the 42-yard line, and that's where the Eagles will take over. So Liberty Benton, or Pandora Gilboa, chews up just about six minutes of this third quarter but are unable to get any points. And now the defense is going to have to come up and try and keep Liberty Benton off the scoreboard here in the third quarter. Yeah, they've got to stop these big plays by Liberty Benton. They've got to do better coverage on their secondary and watch for these guys cutting across the middle. Lead with a pitch on first down, making moves through there. Elkert once again out to the 45-yard line, plus territory for the Eagles in a Northwest Ohio recycling first down. I'll tell you what, he is so quick. He takes that pitch, and, man, he just flies right past everybody. He's not afraid to take a hit once he gets you know, in some traffic back there either. Fast and elusive. That's who Elkert has been in this one tonight. We are the halfway point, past the halfway point of the Citizens National Bank third quarter. Here's Elkert once again on the pitch from Lieb out to the 40, past that to the 37-yard line before he is brought down. Almost another first down on that. And picked up about eight yards on that play, or maybe seven. Any case, good pickup for him. They'll say second down and two officially. So officially seven yards picked up. Second down and three. Three wide receivers to the left. And handoff. They're going to that direction once again as Austin Collard takes the handoff. 
out to the 29-yard line, and that's a Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. That's a big luxury if you're Liberty Benton to have three running backs back there that can, all of them you can just enter. Just take one out, bring another one in. A lot of interchangeable parts in this team. Without a doubt, collar to 5'11", 170-pound. Listed running back officially, Elkert. Uh, Seth Elkert is listed as a running back as well. Zach's been getting a lot of the carries. There's a nice stick after a couple of yards gained there by Connor Barbara. Chase Was that, Myers, I think, on that. That Chase Meyer on the tackle. Yeah. That's either Meyer or Lee. I'm almost to the point where I need to get binoculars for yeah. some of these press boxes. Or a telescope. I don't know. It depends on... It's on how my eyes are doing. Well, those white numerals on the blue background is really nice for the Liberty Vent now. Here he comes again. That's for sure. This is Leap's going to be keeping it. Lowers the shoulder out to the 19-yard line. Good for a Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. That'll put the Eagles in the red zone. And a great fake on that one right there because you saw you know Burkholder coming around the edge full steam, and he kept following around. He was just following Elkert, Zach Elkert, around the corner. In the meantime, Lee was going the other way. Good play there. View of it on our Finley Truck and RV replay. Ball to the 19, first and 10. 324 remaining in the third quarter, and Elkert going nowhere. Lane Lee in the backfield for the stop. One of the few tackles for loss so far today for Pandora Gilboa. Yeah, I said it earlier, I've been really impressed with Lane Lee as, from his defensive back position. He not only covers really well, but he gets in there on the blitz a lot of times too. Second down and 15. Leaves and slipping is Reed Irwin, number four, and still makes the catch. So picks up two on that play. Third down coming up, 13 to go for Liberty Benton. This is a big third down play for right now for the Rockets. I was just going to say an opportunity for... I don't know if the Rockets get off the field with no points allowed. Liberty Benton is a pretty darn good field goal kicker. But certainly an opportunity to make it uncomfortably long. If that's what they indeed try to do. But Lee's going to try and get first down here. Oh, and snagging that ball out of the sky. And taking this one oh, all look at him fly. the way. Is he going to get there? He does. Pick six to the house for PG. Chase Meyer getting a touchdown on the other side of the ball. Has breathed new life into this Rocket team. And if you watch that play developing if you see it on the replay, Chase Meyer was standing right back there just watching you know, the quarterback and watching where he was going to throw it. And he had that time perfectly. Watching the quarterback all the way, I think, on the Finley Truck and RV instant replay. Just snags that one up out of the sky. And the only question was, was anyone going to catch him? The answer, obviously, no. What a turn of events here for Pandora Gilboa. The extra point is up and good. So we're talking about maybe going up by multiple scores. Liberty Benton, now Pandora Gilboa has cut it to a three-point lead, 24-21 here in this one. We'll be back. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets. Rockets with a 90-yard interception return for a touchdown. Chase Meyer bringing it in. And it is a 24-21 Liberty Benton lead on the short kick. Brought out 
to the 49-yard line, and that is where Liberty Benton will start their next drive. And we were talking about possibility of you know, Liberty Benton going up maybe 31 to 14 or 27 to 14, something along those lines. And just like that, a turnover makes it 24-21 and changes the complexion entirely of this third quarter. Oh, it certainly does. It changes the, you know, the momentum as well to Pandora Gilboa. They got to be fired up right now on their defense. Let's see if their defense can carry that on. Play is blown dead. And it's going to be a false start against Liberty Benton. So, rains of pours. Yeah. First and 15. Yeah, we'll see what kind of defense Rockets can have now. I mean, they've got to be fired up after that touchdown and just, you know, they can think of nothing better than stopping Liberty Benton right here. Receivers out, handoff. This is Elkert up the middle, and a little bit of a shoestring tackle, but really still able to get five more yards out of that one. Picks up about 11, second down and four coming up. Indoor's been able to get into the backfield with that blitz that they're running all the time, but unfortunately, the, you know, the quarterback's being able to hand it off to his running backs, and they're being able to blow right past that blitz. Second down and four. This is Elkert once again out across the 40. Has the Northwest Ohio Recycling first down. Stopped at the 39-yard line. You got that kind of speed and quickness in the backfield like that. That's a luxury for your offensive line, too, because they don't have to open up that big of a hole for that guy to get through. Without a doubt. Come up on the final minute of quarter number three. And what has been a rather fast-moving third quarter. Lead back to pass. Pass complete to Elkert. Has some blockers. Has to... Move a little bit further in field maybe than he wanted to, and he gets out to the 31-yard line. Yeah, he was forced back to the inside. If he'd been able to get out to the outside a little bit on that run across the field, he might have gotten some more yardage out there. Second down and two, and this will likely be the last play of quarter number three. Lead with Elkert in the backfield, seven seconds to go. And they are not going to run it. So that'll do it for quarter number three. 12 more minutes to go. It's 24-21. Liberty Benton on top. We'll be back here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. And our fourth quarter is sponsored by Citizens National Bank. See how we're building business businesses one relationship at a time at cmbohio.com. Ready for quarter number four in this one, 24-21. Liberty Benton on top looking for more as Pandora Gilboa able to score on the Eagles defensively here in the quarter that just ended and there's once again Zach Elkert showing the shifty moves and getting another Northwest Ohio recycling first down. He was able to step right out of that ankle tackle on the previous defender but caught by the second one but he is so quick and so nice moves back and forth. Ball in the 23, first and 10. Elkert, once again, up the middle. Moving and shaking and putting it in for six more. Elkert is just so dangerous and so elusive once he gets to that second level. About like the Tasmanian Devil out there. I mean, he just kind of spins around all over the place and he finds an opening. 
Welker takes it in from 23 yards out, and it's 30 to 21. As Liberty Benton tries to go back up by double digits. Snap, hold, kick is up, and it is good. 35 seconds gone by here in quarter number four. 31, 21, Liberty Benton on top. We'll be back. Tonight's first down sponsor is Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. Eagles waste no time finishing that last drive. 31-21, Liberty Benton on top. And much like we said in the beginning of the third quarter, Pandora Gilboa, Needing a score here to keep pace with Liberty Benton, although to PG's credit, they've done a lot better at keeping Liberty Benton out of the end zone. Only one touchdown so far in the second half. A flag's come out at the end of this one. A couple flags come out on that one. Now it's, now it's up to Pandora Gilbo. You got to respond. This big that field goal by Nealis earlier on, you know, made the difference in this game. I mean. It is not an insignificant uh, kick in this one is face mask personal foul is assessed to Liberty Benton. So that will add 15 more yards to the return. Now put Pandora Gilboa at the 37 between the 36 and 37. And can the Rockets put a drive together? They got to play it smart. They've got to, you know, Oh. Gurdon looking, throws this one up for Meyer and oh. almost brings that one in. Had the fingertips on it and couldn't bring it down. Second down. Like Reed Irwin, stride for stride with Meyer out there. You know. I'll talk about it here after this play. Ball in the 37, second down and 10. Gurdon puts this one and incomplete. Not exactly certain who the intended target was on that one. There were a number of guys that could have come down with that one. Uh, perhaps Nathan Walker, a little far out there. A few guys have come down with it. A couple of more moves. We mentioned this contest being the de facto BBC championship game. And, of course, if you're an Ada Bulldog fan, you're thinking, hold on a second. Yeah, we're We've only there. got one loss. Lost to Arlington earlier in the season. But the PG has to come through here. So could have a point to play if uh, Pandora Gilboa comes up with this one. And Erwin right there getting his hands on it and couldn't bring that one in. And that'll be fourth down. Well, we've seen a battle out there between Irwin and, and Chase Meyer. You know, both of them stride for stride on about every time they, Gurton wants to throw that way. And it looked like they, they must have seen some type of matchup over there that they liked because that was not something you would expect to, to call on third down unless you thought that was something that you thought was, was quite advantageous for you. Ball comes oh, wow. out, and Pandora Gilboa is all over it. Rocket football off the turnover. Wow, that rocket yeah, was right there to, to scoop that one up, too. I think it was Burkholder. He jumped on that. So the Rockets catch a break. And they will get the football in plus territory at the Liberty Benton 31. Have plenty of time left. We're only 10.54 left here in the fourth quarter. When you're a Liberty Benton fan, you got to be thinking, come on. <laughs> Quit giving them opportunities. Gurdon hands off. Miller. To the 31, back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard, if that. It'll be second down. 
And credit to the Liberty Benton defense, those runs that were available to Miller earlier on in the game, those usually get bigger as the game goes on. They have disappeared here in the later half. Yeah, they're getting some great play from their linebacker crew back there, kind of helping out that defensive line. Second down and 10. Ball still at the 31. Gurdon flush out of the pocket and brought down at the 44-yard line. Guess who? C.J. Barbara with the sack. We don't know that guy. <laughs> wow, what a game he's played all night long. I mean, he has been everywhere. That's huge. 12-yard loss on that. Third down and a literal rocket. Ball on the 43-yard line. They have to get to the 22 for a first down. Screen pass, Burkholder, a little off balance. Had to stretch out to get that one and falls down. So he'll lose an additional yard, but really at third and 22. Now C.J. Barber almost knocked that one out of the air as well on that one. He took a swat at it as it went by him. <laughs> So fourth and 23 in an appearance that they're going to go for it, unless they're going to pooch punt it. Indeed, that is what happens. So they'll try and pin the Eagles deep, and that one's going to roll into the end zone. So the fumbled punt return does not hurt Liberty Benton, and after a three and out, they get the football back at the 20-yard line. Now we'll see if Liberty Benton can come back and score, put this one out of reach for the Van Orn Kilbo Rockets. But that very well might be the case if they can put another touchdown on the board, which is certainly not a given with how uh, the Rockets defense has played here in the second half, at least as far as uh, forcing turnovers and really making Liberty Benton work and have them move the ball methodically down the field. There's going to be a, a pitch to Elkert. Elkert Oh, look at this. Still on the move out to the 45-yard line. Northwest Ohio recycling first down as he gets 25 on the first carry of the drive. Patrick, he was averaging just under seven yards a carry coming into this game. I think he's up that average a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> he, he has been so impressive out there, just dodging you know tacklers left and right. Circle, triangle, hit stick. He's been doing it all. Here he gets it again on first down. Out to the 49. That's Austin Collard on the carry. On that one, second down. And, of course, if you're Liberty Benton, you really don't need to run down the field and score. No, you want to eat up as much time as you can. You want to try and take this clock, yeah, as you said, as far down as you can. And a touchdown will make it three scores. Field goal would still make it a two-score game. Here's Elkert again. First down out to the 35 to the 33 yard line in his yards after contact stat tonight would be ridiculous. Landon Moore bringing him down the junior for a Pandora Gilboa. Another Northwest Ohio recycling first down. You hate to see your linebacker making tackles on a guy that, that far yeah. <laughs> across the line. Especially when your linebacker is getting dragged about four or five yeah, yards really. before he makes the tackle. Ball in the 34 now, first and 10. Elkert up the middle and out across the 30 to the 29. And, you know, it's, it's three, four, five yards after contact. Yeah, at minimum, every time. And all you have to do is say, Elker, doesn't matter, Zach, Seth, <laughs> yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. One of those two guys. Five-yard pickup on first down, second and five coming up. And we've got a player. I want your quarterback out there. <laughs> 
But for a second, I thought someone was injured out there. Like, wait, what are we doing? We're waiting on the quarterback. Play clock down to one, and uh, yeah, nope. Scott Garlock's going to call a timeout. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, with 15 seconds, he's still over here talking to the coach. I'm yeah. thinking uh, you might want to get back in there. Clock's, clock's running here. Timeout on the field with 6.29 remaining. Liberty Benton with a 10 point lead and trying to extend that to 17. And uh, really, you got to think, put this one out of reach if they can get the job done here. And we talked about Liberty Benton's upcoming schedule for Pandora Gilboa after this. Uh, they've got Arcadia still, as we said, looking for their first win. And then uh, they will host Ada. Actually, um, this is PG's last road game. They are at Pandora Park for the remainder of their 2024 regular season. Arcadia, Ada, and Riverdale. So PG, Ada, regardless of how this one turns out, will be a very interesting uh, oh, BBC yes, matchup. Here's the handoff to Elkert. Breaking tackles to the 26-yard line. It's going to be about a yard short of the first. He's getting a little bit tired. A little tired. You can tell when he got up just now, but he's really worked hard all night long. He's had a lot of carries. A lot of banging around out there. Third and short. Elkert still in the backfield. A couple wide receivers out there for show, presumably. I mean, you could pass it, but just don't think that's going to happen. Elkert gets the first down. Northwest Ohio recycling first down. Out to the 23-yard line. Elkert right, running right up the back of Parker right out there, the six foot, 260 pound senior guard. Chewed up a lot of time on this drive. They absolutely have. Down to five minutes remaining in the game. Blitz coming in, getting home. No, Collar getting a couple of yards there. Thought that was going to be a three or four yard loss. And he ends up picking about a yard up. Lane Lee ended up getting the tackle. And Ben Burkholder getting in there again on that blitz. The Rockets, no doubt, hoping they can force one more turnover. And try and stop Liberty Benton and keep it to a two-possession game and at least keep the Eagles close. And this is Elkert. Defensive pressure getting into the backfield, but... No matter, Elkert across the 15 to the 13 and close to another first down. And a flag comes out. And looks like it might be on the Eagles. And it, uh, it is. No signal what it is, but. I was going to say they didn't signal what it was. I'm going to say holding. The Rockets have done a good job of getting into the backfield with their blitz. Unfortunately, with the speed and quickness of the running backs for Liberty Benton, they've been able to get right past it. Now, that time there, Ben Burko was able to make the tackle. Gets in the backfield there. So what had been a second down and short has turned into a third down and long at the 28-yard line. The third and 16. But the key right now is the clock, and it's running down to the last 3.30 left to go in the game, and that's all Liberty Benton's concerned about with a 10-point lead. Hard to imagine them putting the ball up in the air, but here we go. He's going to go for it. Looking for it in double coverage. 
And pass is incomplete. Liberty Benton fans wanting a flag, but not going to get one. Seth Elkert, the intended receiver on that play, and it'll be fourth down. This has been a really physical game. These guys are going to feel it tomorrow morning, no doubt about it. But when these two teams meet, you can expect they're going to just knock each other around. Without a doubt. And that is what we have seen here tonight. Here on fourth down. Lee looking. Going to take one more shot. The end zone has a man. Passes. Caught in the corner. And a good for a touchdown. A Heigl Insurance touchdown. And that should ice this one here tonight. Well, it was a gamble. A gamble they could take because even if it was incomplete, Pandora would just have to take over the ball where it was at. And that would have given a long field to go down as well. But you take that gamble and it pays off. Trevin lead to Braden Lehmeyer for 22 yards. And that will put this one out of reach, 37 to 21. Needless with the extra point coming up. And a flag, flags everywhere on this one. As a false start penalty against Liberty Benton. Lehmeyer catching his second touchdown catch of the, of the season. So that'll back him up five yards. And now it's a moderate distance field goal. Yeah. 25 yards. A little two step and kick it. Yeah. Oh, backed up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more of a runway on this one. Kick is up. Flag is up. So he hits it again. The uh, official there by the right pylon had his flag in his hand as he signaled <laughs> that it was that it was up and good. And I think this one is going against Pandora Gilboa. So my guess is they'll decline this one. Because the extra point was made. Or are they going to accept the penalty and try for two? That doesn't look like that's what they're doing. No. So I would assume, well, if it was a dead ball foul, kick doesn't count. Will this one count? Will we have an extra point? We will. Yep. 38, 21, 309 left in this one. We'll be back here on WOSN. Welcome back. Our touchdown sponsor tonight, Heigl Insurance in Finley, has over 65 years of experience in the insurance industry, offering coverage for auto, home, business, life, commercial, and more. Fourth down conversion is a touchdown for Liberty Benton, 22 yards to Braden Lehmeyer. 38-21 Eagles about to move to 6-1 and one on the season as they'll extend their winning streak to five and have the driver's seat inside track. Pick your metaphor here in the Blanchard Valley Conference this year. At Meyer with a nice return out to the 31 yard line. And I suppose it would behoove us to say that it, it is not necessarily a done deal, but if you're Pandora Go Boy, you got to strike and you got to strike now. No, absolutely. You can't waste any time at all. You've got to get points right away. And then probably an onside kick if you do score and try to get the ball back again. But. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a three possession game. It's it's not likely, but we we've, we've done this enough to see all kinds of silly things. Here's a trick play. I think that was a double handoff again, maybe. Yeah. To Burkholder and went down to thirty six. Yeah. 
Went down to 36. Well, both these teams played their hearts out. you got to give Pandora credit for to come back and pull them within three points. You know, it just kind of fell apart after that. But. Gurton lets this one go. Pass is complete. We'll try and get out of bounds and does. Northwest Ohio recycling first down. Out to the 42-yard line. That's Nathan Walker making the catch. But, they, you know, Liberty Bennett really, after losing to Columbus Grove earlier on, and they were smoked by Columbus Grove 41-14. to After losing that game, they have just built momentum after that time and time again, and they've just – their defense has picked it up. Their offense is really hitting on all cylinders. Flight comes out as Lane Lee regrets catching that football. Technically, it was incompletion. He didn't catch it. Flight came out before, and Lee with a cramp. So we'll see what the penalty here is. Another big stick by Reed Irwin out there. So an illegal shift against Pandora Gilboa is... They'll attend to Lee on the field as he's having some cramping. And of course, you feel pretty good after a kid gets blasted. He's just got a cramp. That's yeah. certainly encouraging. And he's a tough kid. He really is coming on his own for you know as a defensive back. He just plays. He plays his heart out every game. So getting around to this one, want to thank our terrific crew for helping us pull this one together. Zach Keith, Kelsey Beimer, largely responsible for uh, getting this one on the air. Thank you guys for all of your help. Kelsey was uh, was a pinch hitter uh, tonight. We had someone else who got sick. And uh, Kelsey, the princess of positivity, if you listen to uh, the numerous things that she's involved in around the area, helping out putting this one together here tonight. I really appreciate that. Ball on the 37, it's first and 15. Gurdon airing this one out, looking for his man, incomplete, intended for Chase Meyer. And Meyer double covered on that play, second down. And between Irwin and Meyer, I think they've exchanged uh, name, address, everything else, because they've been side by side all night long. Here's Gurton again. Flushed out, second and long pass, incomplete. Looking for Meyer again. Meyer and Irwin have, as you mentioned, Dar, they have uh, they have battled. In fact, Irwin's down there signaling, "Hey, he pushed off." <laughs> Give me a break. Right, right, okay. We, we would not be surprised. Obviously, we're not watching one set of kids the entirety of the game. But no. I would imagine that there's any number of pushing and shoving things that happen with guys that are defending and covering. Oh, and no, absolutely. All, all through the night. And there is a penalty uh, on this play. A 15-yarder. So... Must have been a personal foul. It's really about all you could do on offense to get docked 15 yards. So second down and 30. The ball is at the 21-yard line. They have to get to plus territory to get a first down. And Burkholder's going to try and get all of it back. He's pushed out at around the 40-yard line. So he's going to get back almost to the original line of scrimmage. So nice pickup of about 19 yards for him. It's the second big long run for Burke Holder tonight. He got the first one on his touchdown run on the double handoff, and that one there was a nice one breaking through the right side of the line and then finding your way down the down the sideline. A personal foul on the Eagles will go the other way then. So that'll give the 15 yards right back and make it a Northwest Ohio recycling first down for Pandora Gilboa. 
Like we said, this has been a real hard-hitting personal game, I'll tell you. And the end of the half for both sides of this has gone rather slow. Girton is dropped for a three-yard loss in the backfield. Been a lot of pressure on Girton. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Darn. No, he had nowhere to go. You saw double coverage on Chase Meyer on that side and double coverage on the other side on the receiver over there as well, and I think it was Lane Lee on that side. So Girton's been flushed and pressured quite a bit, but the pressure hasn't gotten home that often. It got home there on that play for a three-yard loss, second and 13. And Gurton puts this one up, and this time he has Meyer. Makes a cut out to the 20 to the 17 yard line. Northwest Ohio recycling first down. And so the Rockets will try and make this game a little closer. But of course, time just about out for the Rockets with 104 and counting left in this one. Gerton rolling out to his right. Dumps this one off. Oh, Intercepted. To wrap this one up, Austin Collert picks it off, and that puts this one on ice. Now all the Eagles have to do is take a knee a couple times, and this one will be over with. So that's the Rockets' first turnover of the game. And it's the one that puts this one on ice tonight for Liberty Benton. A big win for the Eagles. I mean, gives them a, a leaf slip. We talked about a, a good heads up on a win in the uh, league this year. So Liberty Benton getting the big win tonight over Pandora Gilboa. They stay unbeaten in the BVC, and as we mentioned, they have the driver's seat to the BVC championship inside track driver's seat. It involves a vehicle of yeah. some type, depending some on whatever metaphor you want to use. But, uh, you know, it's been a high-scoring game, which is something I really didn't expect to see between these two teams because you know, Liberty Ben was only giving up 10 points a game coming into this one, and Pandora Gilboa giving up 22 points a game, but the first two games of the season kind of, you know, made that what it is. But uh, when you got to play Grove and Bluffton. But after that, you know, Pandora Gilboa's defense has really been stout. You know, to see this many points in the game and big plays all night long, just, just big play after big play. That does it for tonight. The final score in this one, 38-21. Liberty Benton taking care of business at home. And that wraps up our coverage of this BBC matchup here tonight. For Darden Evergall and our entire WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long, everyone, from Benton Ridge.